Logan's Run. Where do I even start? How about right here? Wait, wh where am I? What's happening? Who are they? Oh. All right. When we come back, let's find a different way in, okay? Oh. If you're anything like me, then you watched the heck out of Logan's Run when you were a kid. And don't you just love retro futuristic movies? Everything's always sterile, like a doctor's office, and everyone wears the same kind of clothes. But that's part of what makes this movie so much fun. But there is some other stuff that went way over my little kid brain. Like, how exactly does this futuristic society function? And Logan is our protagonist, but is he really that good of a good guy? And why is Francis so seemingly obsessed with him? It's last day. So let's renew our thoughts on Logan's run. Well, I'm gonna dive into all that head first, but first, I'd just like to give a shout out to Caroline of Caroline D'Ambrosio Designs. Caroline is a fellow YouTuber, a costumer, a seamstress, an artist, and we have come together on this one for a collaboration of sorts, where I will be looking at Logan's run from a story character perspective, she will be focusing on one of the costumes of Logan's Run, specifically the costume of Jessica. She will be gathering materials and creating her own version of the dress, something she's done with other costumes in the past. She has lots of videos to try out where she goes deep into the design of historical outfits, sometimes modern and sometimes from movies too. She and her sisters have given me lots of love and I'm very appreciative. She's very sweet, down to earth, and informative, and has gotten me interested in aspects of art and creativity that I hadn't thought of before. But some other of her videos that I really enjoy are just when she's talking to the camera, like this one where she puts her hair into a bun. I've put a link to her channel in the description, so please head over there and check her out. You know, when you question, it slows you down. But that's exactly what I have, questions. And so does Logan, apparently. Question, oh. Up until the point when Logan goes on his secret mission, I used to think Logan and Francis were pretty similar dudes. They both like to walk. They like sex. Let's have sex. They love to party. We're having a party, right? And they really like killing people. Mr. Sandman. Yes? But since we're just dropped into this strange new world, we're bound to have questions. So one of these guys has got to be the inquisitive one. And that turns out to be Logan. Francis, on the other hand, just accepts the world as it is, in all its cold, one-for-one -one logic. One is terminated, one is born. Simple, logical, perfect. Simple logic. Unlike Logan, he shows no interest in checking out what may be one of his children. Logan says, Well, it's not every day that they authorize a new Sandman. I tell you, Francis, that's him. You know who his seed mother was? <laughs> of course not. I'm curious, not sick. But this kind of implies that Logan may have other children that weren't selected to be Sandman, right? So how many kids does Logan have? Five? Thousand? Does he ever find out who they are? Who their mothers are? And I don't see any pregnant women around, do you? So they're all like test tube babies, right? We're all born in breeders. Okay, but who regulates this? The city's central computer, right? I'm guessing. But how? The computer doesn't have any arms or legs, so how does it collect all their, you know, fluids? I don't know. Maybe we're not supposed to think all that much about it. So many things left unanswered. Like, being a Sandman is a job, right? So are there other jobs in this future world? There's this guy, the plastic surgeon and Farrah Fawcett receptionist. And they seem to run a pretty clean establishment. Oh my god! Then there's these guys, who are basically janitors. Is this what they do all day? Float around and melt people? Couldn't a robot do this? Seems kind of boring, don't you think? Like, the trailer voice says, The perfect world of total pleasure. Okay, so wouldn't jobs like this, and this, and this, get in the way of all of that? I mean, if I was this guy, I hope like hell for renewal, because this job sucks! I'm not gonna do what you all think I'm gonna do, which is just flip out! Look at the crowd, good carousel tonight. I love the carousel scene. It's so rad in like a 70s futuristic dystopia kind of way. The music, the set, the clothes, and... Oh, 
I can't see the strings. I can't see the strings, I swear. But something about it has never sat quite right with me. Like, how many times a month do you think they have carousel? Like, maybe once a week. Or is it actually every day? Do you think? I don't know about that. That would be a lot of carousel and you can have too much of a good thing. Plus, do they always have the exact amount of people to fill up that circle? I mean, what if they have too many? Or not enough? What if it was just like one guy out there? That would be kind of a sucky night, right? But another thing is that if carousel is such a regular thing, would everyone still be all that excited when they go? I mean, imagine that. How many times have they done this? Wouldn't this get kind of boring after a while? In the movie, they're like this. But it would probably be more like this. Renew. Oh, that guy just got shot. Renew. What time is it? It's the time that it's... How long till it's over? You know, it might be a good idea to mix things up once in a while, like... Logan 5. Approach and identify. When I was a kid, I thought Logan was great. I mean, he's the hero, and his name is in the title, so you know he's important. But now, well, let's just say I have doubts. The movie makes him to be single-minded and selfish in the beginning, but by the end he's turned a corner and become evolved and thoughtful and developed real love for Jessica. Okay, yeah, I can buy that. But the movie is a little foggy about how and when that all takes place. Maybe it happened gradually, right? But I don't think so. Throughout his run, it's difficult to discern if he's merely acting out his mission or if he's acting out of genuine change. But he's definitely scared either way. But if the movie makes it clear in any scene, it would be this scene. The crystal, it's clear. There is nothing to fear. It is all clear. Thanks, guy from the time machine. But it seems like kind of a quick switcheroo, considering we're never entirely sure if he's being honest in his motives. Once the computer puts him on his mission, fast forwards his life clock and puts the fear of death in his mind, I think he's just acting to complete his mission out of self-preservation. He convinces Jessica that he's running, but that's what he was told to do, to become a runner and find sanctuary. Jessica is doubtful at first, but then she genuinely believes him. And you might think that maybe he really does want to escape, at least all the way up to the point when Logan thinks he's found Sanctuary. He thinks he's done what the computer has set him out to do, so he calls all his Sandman buddies in to come and blow the place up. That way he can finish his mission, get his four years back, and get the hell back to normal. But as he finds out, this place isn't Sanctuary, it's just a pit stop. So he has to keep going. But the thing is, he never tells Jessica this, right? That everything started out as a ruse to flesh out missing runners. He never says, oh, by the way, I was lying to you and uh, sorry, you know, for getting all your friends killed. We all go crazy once in a while. Francis becomes the antagonist, kind of like the outstretched arm of the city's central computer. It just doesn't compute for him why Logan would turn on him and their entire belief system. Input contrary, contrary, contrary. But we do see this world mostly through Logan's eyes, not Francis. But I do wonder a lot about perspective. Like from the point of view of Francis, his friend just does a complete 180 for no reason. But I don't think I'd go as crazy as Francis does. But speaking of his behavior, he really does go to the extreme, doesn't he? Like his feelings are really hurt. Almost like he was broken up with. I mean, if Francis is as cold and logical as he says, then why all the passion? I love you! And he follows them all the way into the third act when they meet the old man. They have each got their own name. Um, Catch, course, whatever. No, 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 go past this, past this part. In fact, never play this again. Okay, maybe I'm taking this one a little too far, but even though Logan has to kill Francis, we still get a happy ending, except I have no idea how any of these people are going to survive outside the dome. They have no skills. There's no law, no government. It'll be anarchy. Where would they even find food? Of course, there's always fish and plankton and sea greens and protein from the sea. 
But even though this movie still leaves me with a lot of unanswered questions, I still love it, just like everyone else. It truly is one of the greatest sci-fi movies ever made. And I think that's why generations that were born after the movie came out, generations like mine, continue to carry its torch into the future. I'm Adam Lee, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you really liked it. Until then, stay real. You're still here? It's over. Well, as long as you're here, you might as well check out this video or uh, maybe that video right there. I swear, I'm much better looking in that video. Go, go.